Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, we're back with another episode of Cheap Shots. Now, this series is dedicated to showing you how to save money on the actual wargaming hobby, and on today's episode, we're going to show you guys how to quickly and more importantly, cheaply paint up Escher cutters for Games Workshops Necromunda. As you can see on this little turntable that I'm showing here, this is what the end result will look like for your Escher cutters. And assuming that you're purchasing everything that we recommend for the very first time for your shopping list to paint up these miniatures, you're looking at a grand total investment of $35.61 in order to paint up your Escher uh, cutters in the same kind of tabletop standard that we have here on this preview video. Now, if you would compare that to the materials you need to purchase from both Citadel as well as Army Painter, you're talking about a grand total savings of $176.09, which is a nice chunk of cheddar that you could use to put to other things other than buying expensive paints from name brand products. So that being said, let's go and show you guys how to quickly and cheaply paint up these Escher cutters for Nickermunda. So the first thing you'll need to do is a sub-assembly of miniatures as well as texture them. Now this is why I basically recommend that you do it. What I recommend you do is that you actually assemble the Escher Riders, but you don't glue them directly into the uh, actual jet bike itself. Uh, keep their hands, to uh, put the handlebars into the actual jet bikes, glue the jet bikes to the stand, put them on directly onto the bases, but leave the riders loose because it's much easier to paint the riders and the vehicle separately if they are loose. And that's what I would recommend for your sub-assembly on this one. Now, as for the texturing on the bases, it's really simple. All I use is a combination of wood glue as well as sand in order to make my bases. You could, of course, buy textured paints if you want to, but they cost like seven bucks a piece, whereas my method, just whatever wood glue you happen to have around your house. What I do is I paint the entire base in wood glue that I want the texture to be on. I dust it with sand that I get from my backyard. I don't use miniature uh, modeling sand or ballast or any of that nonsense. I just use regular normal dirt. And then once it dries the base, what I do is I create a slurry, making a 50-50 mixture of wood glue as well as water. And I apply it like a wash all over the texturing. And what this does, it creates an airtight seal to adhere your texture to the bases. And it's really, really nice as well. Maybe cost you a couple of bucks in order to get that wood glue. Just assuming, of course, you don't have the wood glue just lying around. And once you have your sub-assemblies completed as well as your texture done, next thing you need to do now is to prime. So the first thing you do, of course, is to prime your entire miniature. I just use Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. It's a really cheap primer I get from my local Walmart. It costs me $3.99. And what I do, I just prime the entirety of the miniature as well. Now, when it comes to primer, primer does a couple of things. The first thing it does is that it actually gives a very strong surface for your acrylic paints to adhere to. If you were to paint your acrylics directly onto bare plastic without any priming, uh, the slightest amount of friction would actually cause it to detach itself from the miniature and absolutely ruin your finish. So primer helps the acrylic paint to adhere to your miniatures. That's the first thing it does. Now, the second thing that priming also does too is that depending on what shade you use for your primer it would have an overall impact on the vibrancy and the value of the colors that you put on your miniatures. Now, because we're gonna be using a quick paint method, meaning we're gonna be using an oil wash on this, it's gonna darken down the tone quite a bit on the colors that we use on these miniatures. So that's why I go with a white primer for that reason. If you were going for more of a darker uh, paint tone, you could go with like a black primer if you wanted to or something medium in the middle. You could use a gray primer. But like I said, since we're using that oil wash, I prime everything with one uh, solid coat of white primer. And once it's dry, we can start working our base coats. So the first thing, of course, is I paint all the flesh on my Escher Riders. Uh, basically, use four different skin tones. I use Delta Serum Coats, Peaches and Cream for the right and left-hand side, Apple Barrel Paints, Flesh Color for the one in the uh, left-hand side as well. I use uh, Nutmeg Brown by Apple Barrel Paint for the third rider, and then I use Burnt Umber for the rider on the far right-hand side to give you a nice, like, kind of variety of skin tones in these miniatures. Now, the Delta Serum Coat, you can pick that up at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents, while the other three you can get from your local Walmart for about 50 cents as well. And I did this to kind of show you how the vibrancy of the colors would look, especially using these cheap craft paints. You can create some really great skin tones on these characters, put two thin coats on it, and you're ready to rock and roll. The last thing we do on these miniatures, of course, is to put a dry brush on all the flesh that we just did. I used uh, Apple Apparel's Ivory Paint, which cost 50 cents, as well as Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel, which also cost 50 cents. And then I just used the Peaches and Cream uh, for the flesh color character. And the reason why I did this is so that way... Uh, 
Dry brushing is a great way to highlight your miniatures. What dry brushing actually does, it allows the pigments of the paint to actually adhere to the raised surface of the miniature. And what this does, it creates the illusion of depth in your miniatures. The darker base coats stay in the recesses of the miniature while the dry brushing stays on the raised surface of the miniatures, creating that depth look. Now I will warn you, when you dry brush your miniatures, you're gonna have this really pastel kind of chalky finish on your miniatures. And if you do see that, do not stress out. The reason why is because when we put our oil wash on these miniatures, the oil wash will smooth out those transitions and get rid of that chalky appearance. It's gonna blend our colors together and make an overall beautiful effect. Now I do have to apologize for this photo as you can see right here. And the reason why I have to apologize for this is because I actually did a couple of paints without taking photos of the steps. I just got over eager when I did this. So I do apologize for that, but that's okay though. I'm gonna run down what I basically did. Uh, I painted the trousers and the boots of the riders and pavement paint by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs 50 cents. It's a beautiful dark gray color, almost a blackish color. And I did that for the pants. And then of course what I did is I painted their, uh, their shirts and yellows when I decided to paint for that one as well. And basically just used normal King's Gold from Apple Barrel Paint, cost you 50 cents for that color as well. And for the hair I use was known as Diva Pink, which is a bright, uh, hot pink kind of color. Also made by Apple Barrel Paint for 50 cents, and I painted their hair up in that. And then of course I painted their uh, elbow knee pads as well as the uh, harnesses that attach to the vehicle in uh, Tuscan Teal, which also cost 50 cents at your local Walmart, and I just did that real quick. And then for the entire dry brushing on this, I actually used one color, which is Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get that from your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. I just did a quick kind of dry brush with that folk art color with that light gray to give these guys kind of like a dusty appearance because they should be zooping around all over the uh, ash waste and that's pretty much what i did for this section here so continuing with the riders, I then start focusing on the finer details on these miniatures. For example, all the metallic elements. So these Escher riders actually have quite a bit of metallics on them, uh, both on their chest rigs that they're wearing, as well as their goggles that they have, uh, as well as the stiletto heels on their boots. And what I did is I just picked that out two thin layers of gunmetal gray by Folk Art. It costs you 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. Beautiful gunmetal color. It goes really, really great with the color scheme overall. And I just put two thin coats on that on the metallic parts. The last bit of detail I used was uh, using Emperor's Gold by Deco Art. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. I put Deco Art uh, to create those gold color, uh, gold colors on metallics for like the lenses, their goggles, for example, uh, their knee pads, as well as their belt buckles. And the last thing I did, of course, is pick up the lenses on their uh, goggles that they're wearing. And what I did is I just put a single dot of True Red by Anita's Acrylic. You can get this from your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. Just put a single dot of red on those lenses, and they were pretty much done with the riders for the most part. So the riders over with. We're going to focus now on the actual Escher cutters. Now for the Escher cutters, when you actually look at them, they're basically just giant jet engines with some panels put on it to actually grip onto with some controllers as well as some weapons on it. So what I decided to do is actually spray paint the entirety of these actual vehicles in another spray paint. This time I used Rust-Oleum uh, Silver Spray Paint. You can get this at your local Walmart for about $3.99. Uh, as you can see, I just spray the entirety of the miniature down in order to get that metallic base element down. And the reason why is because I was experimenting with using glazes on Necromunda vehicles where you start off with a metallic base Coat, and then glaze layers of color onto the metallic elements. And what this does, it creates this kind of interesting al uh, alloy kind of pink uh, scheme going on with your vehicles. Like as if like you got like this metallic pink and yellows and greens and all kinds of stuff. It looks really cool when you actually do the um, actual glazing on it. And at the same time, it also kind of shows some of the silver showing through. It looks like it got weathered and worn in the way ash waste. So I thought that was a really great system. So that's what I decided to do for this one. I then also painted the superstructure of the engines, like the engines itself, as well as the rocket boosters, and uh, two coats of gunmetal gray to kind of create that differentiation between the metallic elements and the maybe the more weathered, greased, uh, greasy kind of looking uh, engine parts of the vehicle itself. And once you're done with that, we can start moving on by applying color by glazing. So the first step, as you can see here, I basically did some glazing on the seats of these vehicles. And it, as you see, we got like this interesting kind of metallic brown uh, kind of going on with the glazing. Now what glazing basically is, is that you just take your paint and you thin it down a little bit with water till it's about the consistency of milk. It's like more of like a watercolor. And what you do is you brush this onto a metallic surface. What's going to happen is that that color is going to show up, but it's going to be very opaque. And a lot of the metallic elements beneath it is going to poke through the coat of glaze that you put on top of it. Now, the only problem with glazing is that glazing does take a while. It takes about two or three coats get the final effect that you want you do have to wait for it to dry between each take but it looks amazing when it's done and that's exactly what i did here i just put two to three coats of glaze of from using uh, moccasin brown by anita's acrylic you can get this for 65 cents at local walmart or hobby lobby and i just did that for the seats real quick and move on to the rest of the superstructure 
Next thing I did, of course, is did another glaze, this time on the actual armor panels of the Escher cutters, things like the actual main body, as well as the, where the uh, turbine is located up in the front. And I used uh, Bright Magenta by Apple Barrel Paint to do this. As you can see, it does create a nice pink color on the vehicles itself, but you can still see some of the silver kind of poking through. Kind of gives this really interesting metallic uh, uh, adenized type of look to it. At the same time, it looks like it's also kind of weathered as well. But two to three coats of that glazing on top of it. And then from there, I move on to my next color. And the very next color I used directly is for the body of the vehicles was by using King's Gold by Folk Art. The stuff cost you 50 cents at your local Walmart. And once again, I did glazing on the rest of the rest of the vehicles that I wanted to be yellow. So things like the fronts of the turbines, the fins in the back, some of the bodies of the vehicles as well. It's just to kind of create a variety of paint uh, schemes and color schemes in this gang. The last thing you want to do is make it look like everybody's cookie cutter with exactly the same kind of paint scheme for everything. Uh, the reason why is because it gets kind of boring when you do that. I mean, granted, these guys are gangs and gangs do traditionally have gang colors, but they don't match all the time as long as that overall theme of different colors being used kind of matches it kind of creates that cohesion so as you can see there i kind of alternate between pinks and yellows on the various escher cutters to kind of create this kind of unique design for it and once i was done with that we can start working on the finer details on these vehicles so the actual Escher cutters themselves actually focus on little diodes and dials and screens are on the control panel on the Escher cutters. I just put two thin layers of Mermaid Blue by Delta Serenco. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. It's a nice vibrant blue color, which also contrasts very nicely with the yellows and the pinks on these vehicles. So it looks really awesome as well. It also does really nice against that silver color and it really catches the eye. Now, the next color I used, of course, was Tuscan Teal. And the reason why is because if you look at the control bars on the uh, Escher cutters, you can see the hands that the Escher riders actually have there. The nice thing about those Escher riders, though, is that their hands are actually uh, gloved. So what I decided to do is paint the entire hand in Tuscan Teal. So that way, look at like they're wearing driving gloves when they're riding these things. And it's a nice little pop of color. And that contrasts nicely with the pink and yellow of the Escher cutters. All right, so the next thing I did, of course, was I glazed the bodies of the weapons. So as you can see, we have heavy stubbers, plasma guns, and grenade launchers on these Escher cutters. And once again, I decided to use a glazing look. This time I used Tahitian Blue by Apple Bur uh, by Stelta Serencoat. Cost you 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. It's a nice kind of turquoise color. I used the same color when I did the uh, Goliath uh, Maulers earlier when I did, we did that uh, cheap shot video and I thought it looked really neat and so I decided to put that on the vehicle weapons. As you can see that glazing effect, you still see the metallic elements kind of poking through the glazing which is perfect because it gives that overall weathered look to this as well. And at the same time it also contrasts nicely with the pink and yellows that I used for the Escher cutters. And the very last step that I used for the base coats on this was to pick out the plasma coils on the twin lanes plasma guns on this particular Escher cutter. I used uh, Lime Sherbert by Apple Barrel Paint. I just put two thin coats of that along the top of the uh, plasma coils to kind of contrast I guess, the colors I used directly on this vehicle already. And with that being said, we're pretty much done with all the base coating with the different colors. And now that we're done with that, we can move on to the metallic elements of these Escher cutters with some accent colors. So with the accent colors on this one, what I decided to do was to kind of touch up the miniature with four different colors. I used gunmetal gray for parts that were the darker gray, so things like the gun barrels of the actual weapons. I picked that out, two thin layers of that. I also picked out some of the gold elements as well, like some of the coils and filters and, and wires and cabling and piping that you see throughout this entire vehicle. I just picked that out, two thin layers of deco art uh, Emperor's Gold as well as Copper by Folk Art as well as Antique Copper by Anita's Acrylic. Now, all of the Folk Art colors will cost you 75 cents at local Hobby Lobby while the Deco Art and the Anita's cost you 65 cents. As you can see there, I just pretty much just picked out the individual details to add some variety of color. Uh, the reason why is because just having the plain metallic gunmetal was kind of boring, so I decided to throw these different colors in to alternate it just to give it a little bit more pop. So things, for example, like the cabling as well as the piping, I picked it out in Deco Art's uh, Emperor Gold as well as Anita's Acrylic's uh, Antique Copper. And for like the muzzles of the guns, for example, I picked that in, in uh, Copper on the barrel uh, the muzzles of the barrels, for example, so maybe the magazine wells as well, just to kind of break up the monotony of, of the entire look of these miniatures. And the very last thing, of course, was I did a dry brush with uh, Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. Cost you 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. It's a nice, bright, metallic silver, and I just dry brushed the entirety of the Escher cutter for both the weapons, the body of the vehicle, the engine parts as well, to kind of give it a, kind of this scraped up, kind of weathered and worn look to the vehicle, like it's been exposed to like acid rain and ash and dirt and debris and all kinds of different things to make it look really awesome. And then with that being said, we got to do now is assemble our miniatures and to work our bases and your oil wash. 
So now that the riders as well as the extra cutters are done, what I decided to do is to fully assemble the miniature by putting the riders directly onto the vehicles as well. As you can see, they look really awesome so far. The riders match their vehicles perfectly. And now that we got these guys assembled, the next thing we're gonna do is work on the bases. So for the bases on these miniatures, what I did is I put two thin coats of pavement paint by Apple Barrel Paint. It's actually not black, but it looks really uh, looks black. It's just a really super dark gray. And I love using this stuff for the texturing bases, especially for the ash waste. I just put two thin layers directly onto the texturing on the bases as well. Now I will warn you, you will notice that if you can see in this picture, some of the silver is still poking through the undercoat and that is perfectly fine. And the reason why is because when we dry brush it with successive layers of gray, that's gonna blend in with the dry brushing. It's gonna look like it's part of the metallic contamination of the heavy metals that are located in the soil of the ash waste. It's only going to add to the overall effect of that nasty uh, toxic wasteland look. So the very first color we actually use to dry brush the bases is that we use uh, Pewter Gray by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs you 50 cents at your local Walmart. And just do a quick heavy dry brush with the Pewter Gray on top of the pavement. And as you can see that metallic silver parts that are kind of poking out, you can't really tell the difference because it kind of blends in with the lighter dry brushing that we did with Pewter Gray. That's gonna add some three dimensionality as well as create this kind of ashy, dusty look to the bases, which looks absolutely fantastic. And then once again, we're gonna do one more dry brush on top of that with Folk Arts Pale Gray. This costs 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. We're just gonna do a quick dry brushing all over the entirety of the base as well to create that really ashy, kind of crusted, burnt out look that is just basically synonymous with the ash waste. And now that we're done with our dry brushing on the bases, next thing we're gonna do now is an oil wash. So as you can see in this video clip right here, I decided to do the entirety of the miniature in an oil wash, the riders, the vehicles, as well as the bases as well. And for doing a quick paint method like this, most people actually use Army Painter Strong Tone or Army Painter Soft Tone in order to create this look, which is perfectly fine. It does exactly as it advertises. It does everything that it says it does. The only problem though is that Army Painter Strong Tone is expensive. It costs $32 per can. Whereas if you use Midwax poly shade, uh, acrylic, poly shade acrylics in Mission Oak color, it does exactly the same thing as Army Painter does, except that stuff costs $7 at your local Walmart, and that's a big fan of that stuff. As you can see in this video, that's exactly what I did here. I just painted the entire thing like a wash using that uh, polyacrylic mission oak color in order to create this. Now, the oil wash does a couple of things. The first thing that it does, it actually seeps into the recesses of the miniatures and brings out a lot of those details that we couldn't see before. For example, you can see the individual lines and gaps between the different armor panels on the Escher cutter, as well as all the gears, uh, knobs, as well as like wiring and things like taking place there as well as the musculature and the rest of the of the actual individual riders who are riding the extra cutters as well so that's the first thing that it does that's what washing does it brings out all those recessed details that we couldn't see before the second thing that it does as well is that it actually blends together our dry brushing with our base coating so as you can see that that chalky kind of pastel look is no longer there it smooths out the transitions between our dry brushes as well as our base coats so that way it kind of blends seamlessly together it looks very organic as well and the last thing that it also does as well as a dark the value of our colors as well as you can see is not as bright as it used to be it's actually more kind of grimy kind of darkened look and that's the reason why we use such bright colors in the first place because we know that this oil wash is going to mute those colors down but in spite of that they still look very vibrant and they look amazing as well now when it comes to your mission oak uh when it comes to your mission oak color for the poly acrylic you do have to wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry and cure and the reason why is because otherwise if you handle these miniatures before they completely dry you could ruin the finish on your miniatures there is polyurethane on these miniatures as well so we'll have that kind of candy coated sheen so keep that in mind so that way you know that they have to wait 24 hours to let that cure all right, so now we're back 24 hours later. The next thing we're gonna do real quick is to base coat the stands that these guys are flying on as well. I decided to put two thin coats of uh, pale gray on that one. And the reason why I do that is so that way, uh, when I glaze the stands, it actually looks organic. You don't really see all the oil wash that might have dripped onto those stands as well. So that's the next thing that we do. do. After that, I decided to base coat the rim of the actual uh, bases with two thin shades of uh, Skyline by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. It's a nice grayish, bluish color that I use for all the rims for all the Nickerman miniatures in the studio's collections. Kind of grays this kind of urban kind of city kind of vibe as well. It also contrasts nicely with the base work that we did as well as a neutral color for the miniature on top. And the last thing I do, of course, is I glaze the flight stands in Holly Branch by Apple Barrel Paint. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's a nice, vibrant green color. I just put a glaze directly onto the flight stand so that way you have like this kind of plasma looking floating thing. Um, I just do that just to make a look of these things rocking off using jet vectors or whatever the case may be in order to make it look like that. Now, the next step, of course, is completely optional, which is to do a spray varnish on these miniatures. So let's go on and talk about exactly what that looks like. 
So like I said before, the miniatures have like this polyurethane that's mixed in with the polyacrylics. So uh, because of that, it creates this kind of sheen, like this candy coated shine to the miniature. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you could go with that if you want to, but I don't like that. I like my miniatures a little bit more matte finish. So I just took some matte spray and just sprayed it all over the miniature to kind of mute down that sheen as well. And this is what the end result will look like for your Escher cutters. As you can see, we have a beautiful tabletop standard and we didn't break the bank in order to make this happen as well. So now that we're done talking about the cheapskate method, let's go and talk about exactly what you'll need to purchase from both Army Painter and Citadel if you want to create this same look using those products instead. All right, so for your Escher cutters, these are the materials you need to buy from both Citadel as well as Army Painter to create the same exact look that we did. You'll need to buy lead belcher spray as well as Corex white spray for your spray paints that cost you $17 a piece, as well as the following colors, which are Emperor's Children, Thunderhawk Blue, Averland Sunset, Longbeard Gray, Fulgrim Pink, Caliban Green, Screamer Pink, Cyberite Green, all those costing you $4.55. For the Burnt Umber color, you're gonna use Wildwood, which costs you $7.80 from there. And then from there, you gotta use the other codes, uh, colors, uh, Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh, Flesh Tone, Baylor Brown, Slanesh Gray, Eshen Gray, Flayed One Flesh, Baharoth Blue, Talisar Blue, all those costing you $4.55, except for Talisar Blue will cost you $7.80 for that one. You also need to buy a pot of Mephiston Red, XV88, those are going to cost you $4.55 for those. And for your metallic colors, you need to buy a Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, Iron Breaker, those cost $7.80 for that. For the grays, you'll need to buy Rust Gray as well as Ultawan Gray. Both those colors cost you $4.55 for those colors. Retributor Armor is going to cost you $7.80 for that. You'll need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which runs you to $32 for that, as well as a can of Munitarium Varnish for $17 if you want to do the matte varnish. And if you want to do the texturing of the bases, you'll need to buy Astro Granite, which is going to cost you $7.80 for that. Now, assuming that you're purchasing all these Citadel as well as Army Painter products for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $211.70 in order to paint up your miniatures the same way we did with my cheapskate method. Now my cheapskate method is gonna cost you $35.61. So when you actually subtract that from the Citadel Army Painter total, you know the grand total savings of $176.09 being saved. So there you guys have it. This is how we go about painting up our Escher cutters from Nicaragua cheaply and quickly. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blog.com for all those greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. I will catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.